Hello, welcome to my garden. I'm Sean McManamy and today we're going to take a look at uh, cleaning nest boxes. Um, I always make sure that I've got my nest boxes cleaned well before Christmas and ideally before the end of November because I find the birds quite often use the boxes um, throughout the winter just to keep out the worst of the weather. And also birds will stake out territories and look for new nesting sites much earlier than you might believe, long before the breeding season begins. So I like to have all my nest boxes cleaned, put back up uh, long before spring arrives. So the essentials is what we're going to need. Ideally, if you can take your nest box down, it makes life an awful lot easier than trying to clean it in situ. And what we're going to need is screwdriver pliers because however you open your nest box you might need a tool or two then you can get purpose-made scrapers um, but if not some DIY uh, scrapers and even a screwdriver allows you to get into the nooks and corners just to scrape out any detritus. What I do like toothbrush and brush to give it good scrub and then to finish up um, we can use some detergent. Unlike bird feeders, you don't want to be soaking nest boxes because of course the wood's going to absorb it and we're doing this late in the year so they're just not going to dry out. So I always just give them a wash and a scrub, try not to get them overly wet and then something like ArtCleanse ready to use. It's a disinfectant which is safe for all wildlife so you can actually just spray it on the inside, spray it on the outside and you don't need to rinse it off, just allow it to dry and it's, it's good to put the box back up again. Um, I'd always try and leave the box open for at least 24 hours just to breathe and clear itself before I put it back up as well. So what I have done, I am going to have to pause this video because of course I filled the bucket, put some cleaning detergent in it, but I've not brought that over. Everything else was ready. Bear with me. Okay, welcome back. So uh, now we're actually going to get on and do some cleaning. So things will disappear off the screen, but I've talked you through what we've got. Um, dog toys we don't need here. Uh, we've got two different nest boxes, two different opening styles. These have the little pins in the side. Over a year, or if the box has got a bit moist or a bit warped, you might want a pair of pliers. So a toolbox to hand is useful. This one, this box was painted by my daughter when she was little. She's an outgrown woman. So this has done me years and years of service. But if it looks a little bit worse for wear, um, that's because it's been used by generations and generations of birds. So first of all, we're going to open up again. Be careful that you keep all of the parts to your nest box if you are dismantling. Take the pin out, open the front. This happens to be Halloween. Now I will warn you, that as soon as the birds move out of a nest box, you'll almost inevitably get great big fat spiders moving straight back in. So if you're a bit squeamish, get yourself a pair of gloves, stand back, just be wary when you open it. I don't know whether we've got anything in this one or not. So in actual fact, we've got a snail. Mr. Snail has moved in, but I can't see any spiders. That is unusual. So, right, it's been nested in. I did watch them. They did fledge well this year. Something else to be aware of is probably only about 70-75% of um, nests will reach full fledging. There will be uh, failures along the way. So <sighs> brace yourself because sometimes you'll find unfertilized eggs left behind. Other times you'll find dead chicks, you'll find skeletons and you know all sorts of so I'm, I'm okay but you know sort of put a pair of gloves on if you prefer. So the first thing we're going to do is just get our scraper and cut underneath and down the sides and I'm just going to pull that straight out and put that in a compost bin. That's all you know it's all worthwhile stuff so this is nice and dry inside which is great. Give it a tap. Mr Snail you can go on the compost heap too I'm sure you'll appreciate all the organic matter over there and if you have a look you'll see that you do tend to get little bits all caught in the corners and that is where you know a good scraper a good screwdriver comes into its own some of these have claws on which allow you to really really get in the corners so next job is grabbing a big brush getting our detergent whatever your preference is give it a whole clean down like this. 
then actually the important part is getting the inside because the birds, the eggs, the droppings, the poo, any death that's occurred has been bringing in the potential for bugs, disease. I should really do it this way around so you could even see what I was doing, but what we're trying to do is to get rid of any muck, any potential bacteria that's built up inside, and absolutely essential is making sure that we get rid of any parasites, uh, fleas or ticks, and in, in particular, any eggs that they have laid, because they will sit over winter, dormant waiting, and only when the birds come into the nest and the warmth of the animal's bodies will actually have those eggs then hatch. So it's really, really important, nest box cleaning, and it's important that you're not cleaning it to the eye, but you're cleaning it for all those little grubs and eggs that you can't see. What I'll normally do is I would allow that to, to fully drain out, but just for speed and simplicity, all I'm going to do now is get my art cleans and I am going to give that a really, really thorough spray so that all surfaces are soaked. And then that's going to go in the garage, dry out before going back out for next year. And what I'll always do is I always put a starter in there for the birds as well.